Welcome to uh, the February edition of Voice of Series. Uh, Brian Hayes. Good morning, Cashin. We're going to be talking about the best and worst of February 2013, and February's tend to be where bad movies go to die every yeah. year. We've got like post Oscar jumping good films, and everyone's like, I don't know what to do with this. Put it out February, and uh, there's a lot of crap to wade through. <laughs> But, uh, okay, so the number three, excuse me, third best movie of February was Mia Maxima Culpa. Oh, yeah, it was. Uh, Silence <laughs> in the House of God. A laugh riot. <laughs> so funny. Oh, oh my God. If, oh. Oh. It's a really, really harsh documentary by Alex Gibney about uh, sexual abuse in the Catholic Church particularly in um, a school for deaf boys in America in the 60s and 70s. And also in Ballyfermot in Dublin, which is where I'm from. Oh. So it was nice to see my local church <laughs> getting represented <laughs> in a documentary about abusing kids who can't tell their parents because they can't talk. Depressing and upsetting sort of film, but it's really well made. Yeah. It's incredibly well made. Um, the deaf men are interviewed and instead of like subtitling them signing, they've actually got people like Chris Cooper and Ethan Hawke to uh, dub the voices over. And they're not trying to imitate them, they're just kind of saying what they're saying. Which is, it was a really nice way of doing it because you're always going to wonder how are they going to tell these deaf people stories. I can't really recommend you go to see it, even though it is good. It's, it's really not something good. I'd feel bad recommending it to someone. It's kind of... Go see this film about, you know, yeah. paedophilia in the church, it's just... If that's what you're into, if you want to see a really strong documentary... If that's what you're into. Well, I mean, upsetting films. Upsetting <laughs> you films. You need to be careful. <laughs> if you're, you know. If you're into upsetting films and you like a really good, strongly made documentary, then go and see it. If you don't want that, if you want to... You know, you're not seeking one. out a downer buzz, maybe <laughs> avoid. Yeah. Out of ten? Uh, eight. Seven. Yeah, well, then that's so seven. That's eight. pretty good. The second best movie of February... 2013 was Cloud Atlas. Then it's a film about like six interconnecting stories that start back in the 18th century. Yeah, around there. And then scoot forward to the 24th century and just stops off in between. Loads of famous people playing lots of different characters of different genders and different races. Uh, and it's all interconnecting stuff to do with love and death and destiny and control and slavery and freedom and just life very well realized mm. film mm. could have been really bad people will go see it and will still think it's really bad yeah this is the the epitome of a marmite movie mm. um some of the stories worked better than others like the one set way into the future i thought could have been a standalone film because there was so much in there and it was so strong and then some of the other ones were a bit kind of Loose and light. Pointless. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. Next, compared to some of the bigger stories, some of them might seem a bit inconsequential. Mm. But uh, the acting was almost universally brilliant. Yep. Uh, some of the makeup effects is really good. Some of the makeup looks a bit norbity. Yeah, it looks like some some of the like you say some of the effects. It looks like they're trying to act past the makeup that they're very aware of the fact that they are drowned in makeup. But then other parts of it are amazing. Yeah. And the one thing I took away from it the most is that the Wachowskis can still really direct action scenes better than most. Even though there's only a few of them, they're still like, yeah. they've still got that, so. Yeah. I thought it was it good was to remember that they, they could do that. Yeah, and it was great because the Wachowskis did some of the stories and Tom Tricker did some of the stories, but they actually blended together really well. There was mm. a very good flow to them and it was obviously that they spent years working on this project and it shows. Yeah. Yeah. How does that? Uh, eight and a half. Ooh. Mm. Uh, seven again. Seven again? Yeah. But it's a bit higher, it's like seven and three quarters, <laughs> the basic math. Uh, <laughs> so the best movie of... February. February, <laughs> 2013. Thank you. Uh, was... Wreck it Ralph. Yay! Yay! Well done, Wreck it Ralph. Not a Pixar movie. No. Um, 
but a very good Disney movie, Incredibly which they good haven't movie. had in a while. No, Tangled was good, but it wasn't excellent, mm. whereas wreck ralph is absolutely excellent. Agreed. Mm. Um, wreck ralph is the enemy, the bad, the bad guy in a video game called Fix-It Felix Jr., and he's feeling a bit put out because, you know, nobody likes him. So he decides he wants to get a trophy or a medal or some kind of recognition for his heroics. So he wanders off into another video game to find that. Uh, and all hell breaks loose because he accidentally lets the baddies from the other video game into all the other ones inside the circuit. Uh, it's Toy Story meets The Matrix. Is how I Ooh, would describe it. Oh, clever. If I was pitching it. Yeah. When I was talking about it, I said that the chases were kind of like candy version of Tron. Mm. See? Um, voice is done by John C. Riley. John C. Riley as Ralph Wreck-It Ralph. Does the voice. <laughs> Sarah Silverman, Alan Tudyk, Jane Lynch, uh, Jack McBrayer. Good character actors instead of you know just people blasting with us voices. with famous people who go look it's blah 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 blah. Yeah. Like yeah, but very funny. Lots of jokes for computer game fans. Visually fantastic. Really sweet as well, without being kind of cloying and sentimental. It's mm. just got a really nice story to it. And it's one of the few films I've seen recently where I've been like, do you know what I'd love to see? A Wreck-It Ralph 2. Well, I think you I might be in luck there. To, it's one of those first films in ages I've been like, I would like to see a sequel to I that. think you might be in luck there. I think they're talking about a sequel, which would be really good. And it's uh, in cinemas. It is preceded. Preceded. Right. By um, the Oscar-winning short film The Paper Man, <gasps> which is gorgeous. I love that. It's so cute. I love that one. Yeah. Yeah. I was all like, don't you dare cry. <laughs> it's, so, it's the sweetest fucking thing. <laughs> you bastards, Disney. Oh. <laughs> I just think about it. All right. So out of ten for Wreck-It Ralph and the Paperman. And? Ah. Yeah. Nine. I would agree with that. I'd give eight just for Wreck-It Ralph, but because Paperman's involved, yeah. it gets a nine. Yeah. So now for the worst three of February 2013, and believe me, there was a lot to choose from this month. Ugh. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, that one. Yeah, it was worse than that. Ugh. Ugh. Way worse than that. Ugh. Right, so the third worst movie of February 2013 was... To the Wonder. To the wall. <laughs> we sweat dropped down my balls. <laughs> Ah, DC motherfucker. I was really disappointed with uh, To the Wonder because I absolutely loved The Tree of Life, but uh, where tree, in li- tree of Life was intricate and varied and nuanced and experiential, Tree of, Wo- tree of Wonder, <laughs> To the Wonder, was just... Not that. No, it was, it was Olga, what's her face, and... Uh, Kulienko. Yeah, her. And um, Rachel, Rachel McAdams, McAdams twirling in a field. Yeah. And Ben Affleck going. But, yeah. but I mean, Tree of Life had very little dialogue as well, but it worked. It was nothing to do with the fact that there was no dialogue. It was just to do with the fact that there was no feeling to the film. It was like a fucking music video. And then Javier Bardem turned up and went away. Mm. It was like a music video to like a really bad song. Sarah McLachlan's song from the 90s. It's just... No, like, it looked good actually. It was just, the cinematography was great, yeah. but that's that's about it. Like the performances were fine, but like it's very difficult to care about performances if you don't care about the characters that they're performing. So, uh, out of ten, two, three. Ooh, I liked the cinematography a lot. So did I. That's why I gave it two. I liked it more than you then. Obviously. <laughs> uh, the second worst movie of February two thousand and twelve was. This is forty. <laughs> Really this upset about this one too. Judd Apatow is on a downward slope. He's not. I don't. I worry. He's getting less and less funny. He was better as a producer. As his films are getting longer and longer. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of a sort of spin off of this knocked up film uh, featuring Paul Rudd and Leslie Mann, and they're both turning 40 and they're questioning their lives and their marriage and. Then, uh, but they're not questioning their lives or their marriage. They're just hiding shit from each other and being really annoying. Yeah. 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 It's not. It's not particularly funny. There's some really good one-liners in it, and there's some funny scenes in it, but it's more. 
it's actually kind of depressing just watching a, fa- a, a marriage just kind of slowly implode. Mm. And then they try to save it, and then it implodes again. Yeah. Um, um, Melissa McCarthy is funny. Yeah, she's that one scene. good. Uh, uh, Megan Fox gets her. Kid off, yeah, and Chris O'Dowd and Chris O'Dowd is funny too. What's his face? Dear guy, Jason, Jason Siegel is in it. Like this, Lena Dunham from Girls is like a really good cast, but n- none of them really have anything to do. No, it feels like a series of scenes, kind of stitched together with the thinnest of threads. Mm. Um, no, no, no. Shut up, Joe. Go back to producing, and just bring us Anchorman too, and then stop it. Mm. Out of ten. Two. Two. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree. The worst film of the month of the year, which is pretty much known as the worst month for film, mm. was... Die Hard 5. A Good Day to Die Hard, to use its Yippee-ki-yay, actual Mother Russia. title. Um, um, another disappointment, another real disappointment. I was ready for this disappointment. The director, John Moore, is Irish. He's the, he's the most... He's the biggest blockbuster money-making Irish director that's ever been, mm. which is depressing because he did Behind Enemy Lines, which wasn't very good. Remake of Flight of the Phoenix, which wasn't very good. Remake of The Omen, which was terrible. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Max Payne, which was yeah. terrible. And now this. Terrible. Terrible. That's Why? Funny. He's like Brett Ratner, but like someone... Brett has, Ratner has Irish. ...beaten him over the head and put him into like some kind of... Zombified coma, it's just oh, it's yeah. As bad as Die Hard Four, it, what was that? What was the tagline of that one? What was it? Four point oh. Die Hard, uh, Die Hard with a Vengeance or whatever it was. No, it was that was three. One. Whatever it was, as bad as the fourth one was. I liked the fourth one. I thought it was pretty bad. Um, it's, it's a masterpiece compared to this one. Yeah. Um, set pieces tied together with car chases. <laughs> Uh, um, McLean goes to Russia to find out why his son has been arrested finds out his son is actually a member of the CIA then all of the Russian bad guys in all of Russia decide to kill them that's it that's, that's it. the whole plot and then they go to uh, Chernobyl been? yeah I was about to say Sarajevo but that's not right Chernobyl yeah let's go to a place where a nuclear reactor blew up that sounds like a really good idea and they fix the radioactivity by spraying water on it <laughs> Now I can take off this contamination suit. <laughs> if only they'd known. Um, <laughs> no, there's some Transformers two stars in Chernobyl as well, doesn't it? Three. Three. Oh God. Yeah, they blamed the Transformers for that. <sighs> um, no, it's just terrible. There's some really good stunt work in it. The opening car chase I actually thought was pretty good. Yeah. Um, that's le- legitimately the only positive thing I have to say about this film. So. Awful, 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 awful terrible. terrible. That was awful. One. One. <laughs> yep. Okay, March. Qu- quick look forward to Mitch. 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 Mitch uh, 2013. Oz. Oz, the great and powerful. Um, based on L. Frank Baum's books about uh, Oz, surprisingly. Um, <laughs> and it's about how the wizard came to be in Oz before he met Dorothy and all of that carry on. Uh, starring James Franco, Michelle Williams, Rachel Weisz. Mila Kunis, Zach Roth. Kind of reminds me of Alice in Wonderland that I really hope that it doesn't go down that Tim burton route, but come back to us in a month and we'll let you know. Next. Next. Uh, side effects. The last, apparently, theatrical mm-hmm. release by director Steven Soderbergh, who's directed many, many great things. Uh, and some terrible things. And some terrible things, too. Uh, Rooney Mara, Channing Tatum, Jude Law, Katrina Jones are involved in a plot about... A new medication on the market which causes side effects. Ooh, clever. It's very good, very Hitchcockian. <laughs> and <laughs> I can't believe you just laughed at that. It's like doing a show with an eight year old. <laughs> the last one for the month is Stoker. Um, Chanwook Parks, or Parkbook Chan, or whatever, however <laughs> the order of his name whatever. goes in. Is that the racist? Whatever his name is. <laughs> Chan, blah, 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 blah. Whatever order he decides to put his names in, I'm not judging. Um, it's his first English language film. 
and uh, it's all about a girl whose father died. Mia Wasikowska's father dies, and her uncle, with questionable motives, comes to live in the house with her mental mother, Nicole Kidman. Um, it's very arty. It's a very beautiful film. Yes. Uh, it's actually in cinemas now when you watch this it's already in the cinemas and I highly recommend you go to see it yep. it's one of the better ones I've seen this year so far absolutely so until March the end of March end of March um, this has been Mary Cashin that one's been broke that one there <laughs> it's been broken haze behind the camera has been Mary Burke and Brian Lloyd and big thanks to the IFI for letting us film in their lovely screen too we're like doing a tour of the IFI at the moment thank you very much Patrick and all the team at the IFI and we will see you in March <laughs>